hi guys welcome to my channel if you are new here thanks for stopping by and as usual if you are an og you are welcome back once again in this video we are going to be making a victorian corset diy for that matter so so you need your normal off shoulder bastia or tube top for this tutorial okay so the measurement you want is what you would use and I'm going to also show you how you can insert the two types of boning. We are also going to learn how to insert or use your eyelet or gourmet with or without the eyelet puncher. Alright, so if you would love to make one for yourself, then keep on watching. <laughs> Okay, so right on my pattern paper, I am marking the starting point of my work. Okay, so that point is going to be wherever I will start every measurement from. The length of my top is 21 inches. That's for the front. And then the back is 19 inches. Because usually your back is usually shorter than your front because of the past okay so i want my off shoulder to start from five and a half you can use six six and a half it all depends on you so right from that 5.5 that is where i'm taking all my measurements i will mark my shoulder to nipple shoulder to under bust and then shoulder to waist as well as my full length which is 21 inches so i'll go ahead and mark all that and then i'll turn it into a straight line so after marking all with my pencil i'll define all the lines with my marker so you can see what i'm doing Next, I would take my nipple to nipple measurement and divide it by two. So I have three and a half. I'm going to add half inch for sewing allowance. If you don't want to add half inch for sewing allowance, you can just use it straight ahead. So I'll mark my four inches all through. Okay. Then at the under bust, I'm going to take half inch in towards the center front and then one and half towards the side you can make it one inch at both sides it all depends on you and i'll connect the line to my length point just like a dot so i'll connect from my under bus to my nipple point and then on my starting point I'll mark five inches I'll add one inch to the four inches and that will be five inches I'll connect that five inches to my nipple point and on that five inches I'll mark one inch on both sides and I'll connect both one inch to my bust point all right so i'll take my curve ruler to just curve out the pointed part so it does not look too pointed or pointed usually after doing this one side is always shorter than the other side so I'll mark it and then I'll replace it. That means one side is shorter than the other side by half inch. So I'll replace it by that half inch. And on my starting point, I'll go in by 0 0.75 inches. You can do one inch and I'll connect it to my new point. Okay, so on the bust point, or my chest point rather I'll take quarter of my bust measurement 
and then I'll replace the dart inch on the chest point. I'll add one inch for joining allowance and then one and half for seam allowance. So I'll connect from the point there to my chest point with a nice curve like this. And then on the under bust, I'm going to take quarter of my under bust measurement. I'll replace my two inches that. I'll add one inch for sewing allowance and then one and half for seam allowance. I'll do same on the other sides. I'll replace the dart. Add one inch for sewing allowance and one and half for seam allowance. You can add more, but I'll be cutting it out so that'll be okay. So on the lower part, there is no dart there. So I'm not going to replace the dart. I'm just going to add one inch for joining allowance and one and a half for sewing allowance. So I'll connect my lines together like that. And then we are done for the front. So for the back, you just need your bust measurement, quarter of your bust measurement plus two inches, one and a half for seam allowance and one inch for sewing allowance to get your total back. If you want to add zip to whatever you want to do, then you should include your zipper allowance. But at that point, it's just going to be my center back. We have center front, side front. So for the back, I'm just going to start measuring from the chest point. And then I'll just go down by one inch. You can go down by one and a half too, if you want. So I'll just take quarter of my bust measurement plus one inch for joining allowance and one and a half for seam allowance. So I just took normal darts that you would take on a back. So I didn't show that part. So from the center back, I'll go in at the under bust by half an inch and this half an inch is just going to make me take off few inches from my normal measurement but if you do not want to do all of that just leave the back straight all right so connect from the chest point down to the one inch point like that and then afterwards i'm just going to connect my dart straight to the starting point to prevent any gaping at the back right so that'll be all for that and on the other bust i'll take my measurement from my normal back point so i take quarter of my under bust measurement plus one inch for joining allowance and one inch for sewing allowance so you can replace your dart your one inch dart also but i'm not going to replace that okay because i want to snatch my waist snatching means that you take few inches from your normal waist measurement all right so that will be all for the back so I'll just connect my lines all right so you know there is how do i explain it there is um a flap at the back sometimes just to cover up your back so because of that and because of the spaces you create at the back out we'll just take two inches away from the center back to create that space to be able to have loop or eyelet at the back if i'm making sense all right so i'll use marker to define all my lines especially the ones that i'll be cutting out 
so i'll define all the lines so that you'll be able to see what i have made so if you do not want to have a eyelid or lacing at the back then include your zipper allowance okay include your zipper allowance Alright, so that is all. So this is how it looks after defining all my lines. So from the top, I'll come down by half inch, and that is where the eyelet or maybe your um your strap will start from. Okay. So on the back, that's the lower part of the back. I'll go up by one inch. And that is where the modesty panel will start from. The modesty panel is the flap or the the small piece you put at the back to cover your your body whilst lacing. So that is called a modesty panel. So I'm going to make space for that modesty panel as well. So I'll just connect it straight and from the half inch as well straight okay so that is my modesty panel the two inches so on fold is going to be four inches but whilst cutting you need to add more inches about three to four inches to that normal four inches so the four more inches that you add is just going to help you to be able to push in the excess into the dress so at the side front i'll go up by one inch and at the side back as well i'll go on but i'll go up by one inch this is just to help me to have a nice curve for both the front and the back you can go up by one inch one and a half it all depends on you okay so i'll just use my pencil to curve it if you do not want to curve it you can use your ruler to just make a very straight or sharp um line but i decided to curve mine i also curve the back as well so i'll define my line as well just for you to see what i've done and then i'll go ahead and add half inch to the bottom part this half inch is going to serve as sewing allowance at the lower part so that will be all i'll go ahead and cut out everything So these are all my patterns they are all ready so if you do not add half inch to your nipple measurement whilst starting then that means you have to add allowance to all the parts the that part whilst cutting remember to add more inches to the modesty panel okay so I'll go ahead and cut everything so after cutting this is how they look next i'll join all the parts just like the way you join an off shoulder bastia to sew
So I'll go ahead and join all of them with my half an inch joining allowance. So this is how it looks after joining all of them. This is the front lining. I added interfacing. I forgot to say that. I added interfacing on all the parts, both the lining and the main piece. So just showing you how I ironed out the bust part of both the front piece and the lining. Alright, so this is how it looks. So I'll just join the sides with my um what's the name? My one and a half seam allowance that I left on the pattern. So this one I'm just joining the front to the back. Right? All the sides. I'll do that for the other side as well. I repeat the same thing on the lining so this is how it looks after joining the sides I trimmed off all the excess now here we are going to insert boning so we need to make channel we need to create a channel so I'm going to be using this bias to create a channel all you have to do is to measure the length and then you cut it out with a bias that's all you have to do so this you can play with it anyhow you want that means you can be creative as you can okay so there is no rule to this you can add as many channels as you want so i'll go ahead and show you how i'll stitch that on the top so I'll just pin it and then I'll stitch it. So this is how it looks after stitching the bias on it i'll go ahead and do all of that so this is how it looks this is how i created mine you can add as many bias as you can as i said earlier on so i'll put the lining or the main piece and then i'll join side by side so i'll join the neckline first and just pin them down And then after pinning, I'll sew by half an inch. So after joining by half an inch, I'll notch and then I'll turn it and under stitch. So this is how it looks after turning the neckline. I also went ahead to sew the sides. That's the center back as well. I sewed it inside. Okay. So this is how it looks after under stitching. So we'll go ahead and insert the boning okay so you can do that if you want to use the stitching one that is the regling boning then there is no need to use bias just have to stitch it at the wrong side of the main piece okay you can as well make bias and then it sets the regling boning into it but I have to make sure it must pass through. Okay, but I'm not going to be using the regulin. I'll use the plastic one. So I'm just going to use the regulin to measure 
the length and then I'll stop right at half inch above the bottom part because the half inch is going to serve as sewing allowance so you don't want to stitch on the plastic it will break your needle so since there are two since there are two sides so i cut out two you know the edge is very sharp so you need to make it smooth so i'll use my lighter to smoothen it so that anytime you wear it it will not choke you it will not come out of the boning channel and choke you so after doing this i'm just going to insert it into my channel i will repeat the same thing on all the channels measure it and then cut it half an inch away from the lower part now you can also use masking tape to knitting or to make the edge smooth if you do not want to use a lighter or any source of light So this is how it looks after inserting all the boning into my channel. Now I'll create space on the seam line of the lining, any part of the seam line of the lining. And this is going to help me turn the top inside out after sewing the lower part. Now it's not really necessary to turn it inside out. You can use bias to knitting the lower part. But I'll turn it inside out. And then I'm going to pin it down and sew half an inch on the lower part. And so the space that I'll leave, I'll use it to turn it inside out. Now you can put in a um, bra cap if you want. It's not really necessary. You can wear it without a bra cap. So after joining the lower part with my half an inch, I just turn it out again and then give it a very good press. This is the space I left out for the side seam. That is where I turn the dress out. So I'm just going to pin it. And then I'll use my hand needle and thread to just hem it down. So to sew the original boning, all you have to do is to put it on the part you want to um, fix the boning on. So. You put it on it and you sew close to the white part. There is a little white part on the original bone and that is the part that you are supposed to sew on. Now I'll stitch on both ends of the back just to keep it in place. So in this section, I'm going to show you how you can attach eyelet on your corset. Okay, so you need your eyelet, you need your whole puncher, and also your scissors, and then your soldering iron. <coughs> so first thing first, I'll mark 
wherever I want the holes to be. So I'll come down by half inch and then I'll start my markings from there. So I used an interval of 1.75 for all the parts. This interval varies. You can use less than that or more. So I'll mark all of that. Then I'll transfer the same thing to the other side. So this is how it looks on the other side as well. So I'll use a piece of fabric to demonstrate everything. So first of all, I iron an interfacing on the piece of fabric and I marked how I want the holes to be on it. So we we'll use the plier first. So there is a small part on the plier that is for punching holes. This plier comes with punching hole and fixing the eyelet as well. So all you have to do is to punch the hole with that part and remove the excess. And then after that, you put the eyelet into the hole. And then you put it on the plier where you are supposed to fix the eyelet so you put it on it and usually eyelet comes with cover so you cover it with the cover and then you exert pressure on it and then you are done fixing your eyelet as simple as that so if you don't have the plier and you still want to fix your eyelet, all you have to do is to make a hole like this. You, you fold it like this and you use your scissors to cut off the pointed part. You do the same thing to the wrong side. And then your hole will be created. So you fix in the eyelet, you put the cover on it and you use your, your scissors, the end of the scissors, the pointed part of the scissors to exert pressure on it like this. So this is how you can fix your eyelet without the plier and then just get a hammer or a metal object to hit on it to stay in place so for soldering iron if you have a soldering iron it will help you to create the hole instead of using the plier to create the hole so I've connected the soldering iron so whilst it heats I'll create the hole just like this so I'm just going to put the soldering iron on the markings I've done to create the hole and then afterwards I'll just fix the eyelet just as I did so this is how it looks after fixing the eyelet on all of them don't forget to tag me on instagram when you recreate this for yourself thanks for watching this video to the very end and if this video was very very helpful to you don't forget to like it don't forget to subscribe if you haven't feel free to share turn on your post notification bell so anytime i upload a new video you'll be the first to be notified so guys this is how the diy veteran corset looks on me this is how it turned out i decided to attach a sleeve on it please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in any of my videos bye